it gives me great pleasure this morning to be with you for this session dear friends and uh, it's a continuation of solis uh, where critical theories have been made easy you would have been listening to a week session by elite erudite scholars of the different universities mm -hmm. i'm part of the session and i take the uh, privilege to present to you the gender studies which is presented as a revelation explicit and my thought process would be the interdisciplinary nature of gender studies and pretty fine basing the concept first and foremost i would love to tell you that it is a set of concepts and intellectual assumptions that we are going to talk about so then we move forward for the next slide that comes across here you should know what are the objectives that we are going to decide upon before we complete the session after 30 to 40 minutes dear friends we should know that you've been listening to me and what would be the uh, biggest benefit of you to have uh, been here for the session so we know that we analyze the uh, major issues of uh, what do we call as the gender studies okay and define gender the different forms of gender we take it in a cyclic rhythm as we are taking the gender gender into an assumption of a thought process through literary study and then we are going to make specific the different expressions related to the studies and focus on what do we call as the need for the gender studies and what would be the scope at the end of it right so we move on for the concept to be very precise you would have known what a literary theory is right to be very clear about it. A literary theory is a set of concepts and intellectual assumptions as I've already told before. And you should know it helps a scholar to explain his work and writing to the text in relevance. So the literary theory becomes a, a literary theory becomes a critical theory as we have to know the next move to the concept it becomes a literary critical because it exposes and challenges the form of communication and the dominance of the writing through the field of social explanatory and as well as economic and political uh, structures we do we take gender studies as a social concept because very fine gender studies is a very important social field of understanding we take it into economics because of the wide gap that is being between the genders political of the racial differences and the uh, concern to say that uh, women and men are uh, having a bit of a difference in expressions and there comes the political assumptions right so then this theory we need to know can be taken into three criteria of understanding when it becomes critical it is an explanatory note uh, precisely with the practical applications and normative forms and uh, with this understanding we go forward with the different concepts of uh, uh, gender studies in brief okay right so what we aim at and what it represents that is as genders of the human race gathered here this day let's get to know what would this critical theory represent and we know this is again uh, uh, what do we say uh, a social significance of the difference in sex that it would represent a gender it can be taken as an elaborate social field encompassing the varied varied realms of society in status quo to the biological level. and you know most effectively it is interpreted as a phenomenon of human characteristics human behavior and human expression gender transition between masculinity and femininity is of great concern to academic communities at this point of view and we need to know this gender refers to a complex set of, uh, of what do we say characteristics and behavior that are prescribed for members of a particular sex category why do i say particular sex category it varies from different parts of the world that is the main concern and uh, if i would dwell deep into that you know that the impact that it would create uh, would take a long time so we move across for the next uh, concept uh, taken for concern uh, for discussion what it depicts right nevertheless you should know it is 
what the concern basically a field of academic uh, study devoted to analyze the gender identity and gender representation. Representations can be in different form. It can be on terms of roles, encompassing the identity, holding on with the identity, leading to gender expressions and therefore leading to gender research. So then we should know it is a very fine field of social study and understanding, analyzing the social, cultural and psychological background with the biological setup of the gender uh, of the society is important. When it comes to biological setup, the gender specifically harps upon the chromosomal combination of XX and XY and where the dominance lies on this chromosomal integrity, why is a female called the weak sex and why the male is said to be strong is all all that is what we call as a gender bias but still it is part and parcel of this gender studies and precisely to take note of uh, examples we have been discussing over a week many scholars have put forward their views and thoughts and theoretical interpretation with liberal humanism marxism post-colonialism and eco criticism and very many and for me uh, gender studies also a part of an example of this uh, criteria that we have taken into discussion okay now we need to know how effectively this gender can be focused on as a important phenomenon because I've already told you this particular phenomenon is undoubtedly is on the different sexes of the macrocosm the earth is covered up with differential races, tribes and sets of people of human gender, of masculinity and femininity. So then what do we mean by that? Female gender, how it is culturally affected with the traditional values, the softness to entity, how delicate it is to be handled while uh, it has been formed, the female is said to be formed from the male uh, complex identity from the ancient past and how powerful the male uh, character and the person is. In a literary writing, we would know who the protagonist and how it is of differential race, differential types through the races, I should say. Differential races will talk about the different kinds of people right around the world. And now we know with this understanding, we really have to know what would be the inclusions of this gender studies. Inclusions, what are the things that we are taking into account? male studies and female studies or male writings and women's studies you should know how and even cure studies comes into concern in gender writing and you know cure studies is such an important concept wherein in this session I'm not going to talk about cure studies because it talks about the QNS of fiction where there is that extreme entity of uh, abnormal relationships or habits and values focused on and the protagonists or the characters of a fiction will believe in that concept it is more on to homosexual or lesbian or transgender deformity in terms of uh, sexual impacts that they create or force on onto the society. So this is a vibrantly a very large unit of understanding which we shall do in the next session to follow up. But then this field is intricate. Why do I say intricate? Because it touches upon many delicate issues of the ecosystem, of the society and uh, writings of literature are focused to a large extent on this. Most of the writing of feminism or of the post-colonial or subaltern would have spoken about this kind of these inclusions which talks about identity, roles and research <coughs> leading to expression or expression leading to research, vice versa and such an expanding one understanding we all need to take into concern when we are students of literature. Okay, so then having understood this, we move on with the next slide and uh, here we need to know how uh, it goes on to tell us about uh, the importance of the demarcation that we have to feel in gender studies, right? If it is taken as an hypothesis or a hypothetical analysis, uh, there should be a demarcation of what is right and what is wrong and where comes the difference in. So in such is the case, the line of demarcation, if it is to gender studies, would be more precisely on what is womanism and feminism. Both are not the same, though a bit of uh, integrated, uh, interrelated, interdisciplinary applications. 
you need to know a womanism is more towards family oriented concern a woman as such in terms of the race class and gender that is womanism but precise to feminism it is again a bit to the fight or a claim for equality or equanimity in terms of the rights and there comes what we call a complete concern on the gender we can never say a woman is weak in the modern scenario because it is again uh, the dominance of the mental power that helps them to focus and get to concentrate at the higher uh, what do we say establishments right so this understanding gives us a focus on the ideology of gender studies in clarity which is that is that is very important right in constituting terms we go forward to understand this interrelated concepts having known what is feminism and womanism when we talk about gender we should know the simple thoughts in relation to uh, gender roles gender identity uh, gender expression gender research and that leading to feminism okay now if i would talk about gender research um we need to know the uh, range of behavior and attitudes of every gender that is possibly uh, in a form in the society right so lead to many differential interpretations if you would say the basic dimensions of life is reflected in the roles that a man plays or the women plays what is the expected behavior of a man or a women how they have to be in a society the specific rights and obligations play a major role what is that individual self right it again surrounds on the attitude and the behavior of that particular gender a uh, feminine gender is completely different from a male gender why and how and that is that based on the specific rights and obligations as expected of the society and it varies between different races of the world so gender roles play a major role like coming in with gender identity how come this gender identity would be an overlapping concept to gender roles we need to understand at times it get get to be in contested uh, situation it is contested i should say right categorically it is contested because there are overlapping dimensions of issues of life sex and reproduction and there comes the identity where comes this reproduction which kind of gender identity is involved in that particular process when gender is being biologically notified where comes the difference so then identity is based on social status the kind of the person at the society or the legal status patriarchal or matriarchal inclinations within that and the kind of the property assessment coming in with gender and social interactions and how a woman speaks and how a man speaks how much of the addressing is being done to the society and the interaction that dominates the culture of the workplace that's important but as a public personal all the top notch people of the women and of the man uh, are at that public personal uh, exuberance that's very very important so the personal experience and the psychological settings play a major role and you should know the femaleness and the maleness is the major role of the gender identity that is of main significance which is a characteristic feature of any piece of a literary work moving forward with a bit of a thought when it comes to identity to the stoic uh, very very yearly uh, uh, female uh, feminist who wanted to put forward a thought process uh, simon a d beauvoir and we need to know regarding gender she says one is not born a woman one becomes one right right means to say it is the habitual quality of the person the kind of the quantifying attitudes of the person that makes you one of the femaleness is a very very major issue because in a female or in a male both of them have a combination of identities a man is not 100% man 75% to 25% of womanism is there women qualities are there and in a female 80% of femaleness and 20% of ferociousness of that of the man strength is personified there so then it is related in reference to the lifestyle and the social and cultural uh, construction these constructs 
make a person a very strong identity in the society. So we need to know whether femininity or masculinity, it's a state of being, right? And the complete entity, it is a kind of a crux or a flux. We need to know why, because it is all time altering, all time changing, all time bringing in a kind of uh, a thought process in terms of what we call as a protagonist getting to focus. If I would at this particular concept talk about uh, the identity role or the research, gender research or gender expressions as it would be in the writings of a very eminent uh, Indian English writer, uh, a woman writer, Kamala Das. Uh, we'll leave alone all the prose forms, the sum total, uh, poetic forms, I'm sorry. The poetic forms, the sum total of the poetic form is an accumulation in her autobiography, the post writing, which is nothing else but a personal experience of her life. Right? Here the identity crisis against the social bias is very evident in all her expressions. It's a very strong expression to understand her. We have to read twice the verse form or the poetic form, poetic or the prose entities to make it viable. It means to say and you know she clearly cuts through the focus to say that a female person, a female being has been exploited, but then there is the power of a femaleness which can create a kind of the research expansiveness. And the same will go in with the, what do we say, inequality of sexes. If I talk about gender research, it is an empirical knowledge where all the research will fo focus on the kind of the writing of the person, the discourses of the writer. English is basically is filled in with such writings throughout European writing for the white women was so dominant followed in with black emphasis. There comes a mutual exchange between the identity of all the women races throughout. So the basic dimensions of the life inclusive of care, love, sex and reproduction is focused and gets to know to say research is always an identity which can be calculated and uh, analyze and it is contested and you know you need to know in equal act of sexes in the research or in expression was identified by Mary Wollstonecraft in her writing a vindication of the rights of women in 1792 a very earlier piece earlier piece than even Simon D. Beauvoir and then here in these expressions, if I would talk about uh, the kind of the masculine expression and female expression, even in our homes we do find how um, uh, Dada will speak or how Mama speaks and what kind of an integral differences it can be. How come of uh, a soothing words of the mother and the strict story? expression of the father that is what the gender expression is it, it is again on the behavior mannerisms and the interest language and the languages used with the appearances which taken into concern of the nature of the person so the particular cultural contest specifically would tell us the category uh, the categorized way of expression of a female being and that of the male being. Here we can talk about uh, the room of one's own, the writing by Virginia Woolf in 1929. Uh, she has got specific expressions to say. So then uh, she is not very explicit a female uh, feminist, um, though a very strong female writer. And uh, she throughout in that writing the room of one's own, she advocated a balance between male self-realization and female self-annihilation. And uh, problems faced by women were brought into focus here and she advocates women to overcome uh, the separate fem feminist consciousness to achieve femininity of the con unconscious, femininity of the unconscious. So in order to overcome the conflict between male and female sexuality, uh, Wolf's expression would have been from the consciousness to the unconscious and how it can be uh, one of a strong expression of a gynocriticism for which she has been very famous, right? So with this thought, we have come in with the understanding of the consecutive cyclic rhythm uh, and before going with feminism in precise, uh, let me talk about this paradigm shift. There has always been uh, many of the scholars prior to me who have talked about, uh, spoke about paradigm shift. It's such a wonderful concept in literature, right? So then you should know 
many differential causes of study for which these gender studies is entangled areas of perpetual changes with nuances to a reality is the main focus in paradigm shift we flow through the session in terms of the social norms in terms of the political and economic religious and diversified system uh, having gender differences throughout so and then what does this paradigm shift lead to changes over years over decades a period of time and taken as a profound thought of what we call as reality that exists a paradigm shift an existing thought or belief or way of life and yields to a newer version of the reality what life was in the 19th century is what it is in the 21st century we don't go need to go back to 16th century we let us harp on this particular period of time here again the paradigm shift is again taken over how in decades women has been have been treated and how they are in the modernity so then we need to know that it is a multidisciplinary uh, achievement paradigm shifts are powerful shifts one's mind in the literature basing on gender roles and the reality of what a maleness and a femaleness it is there a women gender roles plays a major role in this paradigm shift and obtained through the consistent behavior of women and women struggle against freedom so now what has happened now the women being badly affected from the past or even now at times even now in this uh, pandemic period we see so much of discrimination and violence coming up though at certain areas of reality but then not uh very evidentially throughout the world but it is a bit of a irksome and a cumbersome thought is it not so so when what does this realms of gender tell us about we need to know as we are able to ac- accept and understand the gender expressions the realms of gender will always tell us a symbolic interaction maybe we can talk about uh, a bit on the first wave second wave and the third wave of uh, originality of this feminism over here where realms of gender leads into that particular understanding you should know the first wave would have uh, a kind of what do we say thinking about women's equality right where gender identity was focused in domestic ideology attitudes began to change in the first wave of the period of time when feminism was to be focused then in 1960 the second wave came in feminist in theory came into form evidentially with lot of expressions third wave we had lot of emerged mid 90s uh, ideologies where feminism became more i international and it became multicultural and allowed more freedom on gender continuity so it became a spectral effect right emergence of the rights and right for freedom as against with the biological sex you may be a man you may be a female um a um, woman but still equality came in with the right to say i have the right to claim it not to fight i do feel that it's always fighting is not going to be an identity to be accepted and uh, we need to know that this realms of gender are a way of breaking down gender into different social biological and uh, cultural constructs and which we have definitely uh, referred uh, as a focus uh, in this uh, gender studies even before so then uh, the hegemonic interaction comes in the hierarchical uh, dominance of a male and a female the lineage of a man and women gender bias inequality fighting for equity and equanimity all these were some of the major concepts and finalizing it through the advent of biological sequencing biological sequencing is naturally being born to be right so that is how and here we can say that how aristotle in 30 384 to 322 bc always felt that female is a female that is a constraint of the surrounding uh, reality ecosystem and female by virtue of a certain he was very particular they lacked certain qualities and added that we should look upon a female as a state or sometimes even took it as a deformity which was accounted for the weakness of the physical form but that 
was the old age reality but now it has changed there is supremacy of patriarchal over matriarchal rights uh, that was in greek times but now there is even matriarchal rights in dominance right women is a miss begotten male according to aquinas so these are all the realms of identities that we can always talk and right from nietzsche to freud women were considered to be a bit inferior to male right so the sections of a society which they took it as incapable of any serious thinking but i don't think so along with the scholars we have been some women trying to present our thought process to critical theory and uh, surmounting it has become a success and uh, interpretations vivid and clear would make us understand that uh, there is uh, the maleness and femaleness explicitly the femininity and the masculinity but that is not all that it is privileged to be underestimated it is a uh, developed along with the women studies in a way to touch the world to say that it is encompassing everything i do say multidisciplinary because this gender study is related to many other courses of uh, uh, academic performances no course um, there are very many courses uh, to relate it for health study has got gender studies biology has got a lot of health studies literature has got like gender studies even people working for academic performances in administrative and uh, explicit uh, integrated civil services they have to have evidences on this personal identity of what gender studies is so validating or substantiating the view that it is interrelated subject and by itself now the multidisciplinary nature of gender studies tells that there are multidisciplinary nature of uh, gender studies will always relate it with many other focused academic uh, subjects and courses right so here in this slide you can uh, when you're free you can just go through the gender differences and disparity leading to inequality which has been developed over a period of time but now we have overcome this scenario we are able to try to be uh, in the feminist consciousness and to become unconsciously strong about what our reality is so oh, this is a small uh, gameplay that i put forward for you to read through sometimes when you're free my dear friends so then taking into general theor gender theories a few uh, conflict theory symbolic interaction theory functionalism and uh, biological theory we need to know that uh, uh, there is lot of racialism inequality and feminism being personified over here. here feminism liberal feminism into ideology functional in terms of gender roles so then these theories will give us an impetus to move forward in order to say that the concept of a women though very much hormonal can also claim in for a liberation for the rights and the differential treatment that has been given over a period of time can be overcome and precisely this would lead to what do we say the rights of establishment through the period of time so we are not at the disadvantaged uh, identity we are at the advantage now because we work part and parcel with the men and make it an ecosystem of vibrance right gender study is by and large feminism we've come to the last part of the session here where we need to know that we don't have to take it as an uh, antagonizing or a, a very rough entity of expression but still an interdisciplinary approach to issues of equality and equity when it is equanimity coming into concern we take equity which is based on the kind of the uh, person we are the gender with the expression identity sex and sexuality playing a role because all this have to be understood in a way of balance right so then we have narratives in feminism of activism so which will have uh, its own uh, direct effect on the liberation for the rights so many of the story lines of the ancient past of the women has come into literature crossing over this identity identity specification so differential areas has focused on women status as against the men and very evidentially we know from the mid 19th century we have theoretical uh, negations and negotiations to the women's world with many phases of feminism coming in and already referred the first phase second phase and the third phase into understanding right and who was the one who framed this uh, name feminism by uh, charles fourier 
an utopian scholar and a French philosopher uh, who formed the name Feminisé, which became feminism in English. So that was committed to change the attitudes and behavior. So it became a philosophy that holds with the ideal of equality. So the oppressed and the repressed uh, people of the society uh, said to be the low uh, uh, what do we say, categories have fundamentally worked on uh, for their rights of expression. Uh, most probably in Europe, white feminism came into dominance and which further led into uh, black feminism and then worldwide it moved as a wildfire. So then the metaphysical principles of understanding the concept of what feminism is. Right? So then previously it was thought that men are the primary or the the very first enemies of women, but uh, that considerate, uh, what do we say, misunderstanding has been overcome when women has emerged powerful and at the same time dangerous because the female of the species sometimes tend to become dangerous, not in uh, human identities, maybe in some cases they go wild because of hormonal imbalance, but most probably if you take an, an in concern with animals, especially uh, tigers and lions, they tend to become ferocious when the male doesn't go for hunt, it is the female that is. So the emerging women has a lofty and knowledge-based pride was a very famous concept by our, our very fine, uh, super fine president of our times and who has made it uh, a fact to realize for the people around the world. So feminist, feminist theory uh, is a focus in terms of power, in terms of politics, in terms of sexuality and cultural bias and social uh, integration. So then it's a challenge to be very clear with the inequalities women face even now, but still on the daily by basis, but still we fight for in terms to overcome. So then comes empowerment, how my empowerment of my knowledge, uh, my accusation or uh, of knowledge, my impetus to uh, educate myself is what has been my empowerment. So the rising the standards of women, improving the status of women in terms of training, literacy and education, allowing them to have self-determining <coughs> decision-making ideologies and growing confident to solve problems by their own self is again a part of the society's uh, integrity. So then gender studies explores uh, issues of sexuality, power, marginalized population in literature and culture. Yes, very fine. If you would read very many, uh, what do we say, uh, concepts of uh, feminism, you will know how gender appropriate behavior of both masculine and feminine beings is brought forward as the focus of understanding. And we know that uh, there are uh, phases in women's writing, feminine face, feminist face, as well as uh, female face. What do those faces tell us about? They tell us about the concepts of the 18th century right down to the present world, which tell that women have been given the identity, they have a content in the form of expression and a style, and that is how it has been. As an example, to conclude uh, my uh, explanations and discussions I've been carrying on. I bring forward a living writer, Sarah Makonza, and uh, her, her very fine writing uh, of her latest novel, What the Future Holds, uh, is a very good example. She, Swaziland is such a small land in Africa. Since I've been uh, working in Africa for seven years, the Swaziland had a great force of attraction for me because of a friend who stays there. She's a professor in an university. This Sarah Makonza belongs to that land and she works for pursuit of liberation, she works for women's rights and uh, she is again been uh, a uh, very good uh, editor and a writer but she's uh, been uh, treated badly by her own people. So the modern world, she tries to say that every bit of what her writings would be on uh, women empowerment because she was a female journalist and uh, she wrote about the culture of women and how the existing pattern of lifestyle and tradition of the different tribes that she takes in. The existence of fact to realize on rights, she as a famous uh, critic for the government, the government didn't like her, they tried to subdue her and put her in exile for some time unless and until uh, her own office was vandalized and she was destroyed. 
uh, all her property was destroyed but yet she fought for her right she became a linguistic professor in an university she worked abroad for some time and she formed an association for african women and african uh, book fund group is available made it possible in michigan and you know even now african continent gets every country of africa 54 countries get thousands and thousands of book from european nations that is how uh, sara makonza has initiated that move okay right she's such a great living writer and she teaches courses in zulu and oskosa uh, and it is language of one of the tribes in africa in stanford university and such a pleasure you can talk to her too to talk about women empowerment the story women with a book what future holds i've just taken a small bit of that instance of a gender identity there the future holds has got the story about a lady called kiki and this kiki a young swazi woman of guni type and she is the main protagonist there she as an angster lost her parents but she was cheated by a man and she begot a child and the father menzi damini leaves her and says no more i can have you because in africa the tribal culture and the people life is completely different from what we are here our parents find a boy to live with and to get us married to in most of the cases unless the girl takes a chance to get a to the boy but there in africa no it is they have to choose so then many a times they beget children even before marriage so such is the case then she had to struggle herself to bring up the child and this particular situation in this paragraph she comes in search of the father trying to claim some money to take it as a child support here you know the crisis the gender crisis one identity this story goes on for a long run what the future hold if you're free or good enough or uh, able to get it in amazon try to get it. there is another book called deflowered by kafula mawile pamela an african writer zambian writer even that is very awesome how was an eng girl she was cheated and how she got deflowered i don't need to tell you the meaning of it and what lives how the life goes on every story in africa is very interesting because it's a real life experience of a woman and there comes feminism so then it's got nothing to do with belittling men my dear friends and all the scholars nevertheless it works towards equality and not female superiority so at the female of the species is strong and unique so i thank you in immense for having given an opportunity to address on gender studies hope to see you no sooner in another form in another chapter another version thanks to all the scholars and this session i dedicate to all the erudite professors of the microcosm thank you so much